okay now today we are going to start a new topic which can be simply given the heading of what you call as trusses have you heard about trusses trusses ke bare mein suna hai aapne kabhi no Anybody? sir so let us learn what a truss is now before coming to the main topic of trusses because trusses is the actual topic that is included in your syllabus but before coming to trusses we have to understand some basics behind the logic of construction of trusses so let us start with the very basic concept of what is called as a structure in engineering mechanics okay eventually what we have to learn is about trusses ट्रस क्या चीज होती है क्या काम आती है एंड देन इवेंचुअली वी विल मूव ऑन टू द न्यूमेरिकल रिलेटेड टू ट्रसेस बट लेट स्टार्ट विथ स्ट्रक्चर इन इंजीनियरिंग मैकेनिक्स स्ट्रक्चर रिफर्स टू अ सिस्टम ऑफ कनेक्टेड पार्ट यूज टू सपोर्ट अ लोड नाउ द थिंग इज दैट अ स्ट्रक्चर इन इंजीनियरिंग मैकेनिक्स or in civil engineering is simply something that is constructed to support a load for example a bridge you can see here i will show you a figure see this is a structure what is it doing automobiles will move on the bridge cars and trucks will be moving over the bridge and the bridge as a structure will support the load of the automobiles it will support the weight so it is not a moving part you see it's not a moving part this is a cable which is constructed this is a complete bridge and the purpose of constructing this bridge is only to support this perpendicular weight of the vehicle that is the purpose of a structure and the story of a structure starts and ends there this is another structure which is an arch an arch is also sometimes used for the purpose of construction of bridges the vehicles can move over the arches and the hollow part of the arch can be moved can be used as a pathway as an underpass so is arch ke niche se bhi gaadiyan ja sakti hain aur is arch ke upar se bhi gaadiyan ja sakti hain and this type of structure this this semi circular structure is called as arch arches can be constructed in a rectangular fashion also zaruri nahi hai ki arch aisa gol hi bane this is also an arch if you construct an underpass in a rectangular fashion over which vehicles can move and under which vehicles can move also this is also an arch so arches cables bridges this is what is basically called as a truss we will come to the discussion of trusses later on but all these are structures so trusses are structures cables and arches are structures bridges are structures your buildings inside which you live or inside which you attend your college and all they are all structures okay and structures are made by connecting different individual parts so what are the parts that are generally used in constructing a structure they are basically classified as tie rods or bars beams and let me see if there is any other and columns so essentially in constructing a structure or if you, even if you do not think from the perspective of a structure you simply say ki bhai hame engineering mechanics mein kin kin cheezon ke bare mein jankari honi chahiye to wo in teen cheezon ke bare mein honi chahiye individual members jo hai wo kaun kaun se ho sakti hain it could be a bar or it could be a beam or it could be a column so let us understand what is the difference between these three c o l u m n column so there are bars there are beams and there are columns and these are individual members and by connecting these individual members you can construct structures in your engineering in civil engineering and engineering mechanics you can construct different types of structures by connecting these individual elements 
so now let us understand what is a tie rod or in general what we call as a bar tie rod is another common name given to a bar bars are simply metallic rods metal ki rods hain ye gol ho sakti hain or they can be hollow rectangular sections ya fir solid rectangular sections ho sakti hain but the thing is a bar or a beam or column for that they are all basically rods which will be either circular in section or solid rectangular in section they can be even channels like this aapne c c shape ke channels dekhe honge they can be c channels like this they can be t shaped channels so these are all basically rods is tarah ki rods hoti hain they have a certain length and they are connected with each other to make different structures so if a bar is also a rod a beam is also a rod and a column is also a rod now what is the difference between them the difference is in how these things bear the loads for example let me take a ball and let me say that a rod is embedded in the wall like this ek rod lekar ke deewar mein gaad rakhiye and then what i do i pull the rod with a force of f in the outward direction now tell me what will be the experience of this rod will it be experiencing a tensile force or will it be experiencing a compressive force or will it be experiencing a bending force so this is a question open for your class right now this is a rod which is horizontally embedded yahan se fix kar diye deewar mein chinwa diya hai isko and somebody is trying to pull the rod out of the wall by applying a force f in the parallel direction to the rod as shown by the arrow now the question asked of you is what will be the experience of the rod rod ko kya feel as you can easily imagine that the rod would be experiencing a tension inside the body the rod would be experiencing that somebody is trying to pull the molecules or the atoms apart from it so that is called as a tensile effect okay now on the contrary if i change the direction of the force and i say that now the same person is trying to push the rod back into the wall with some another force f2 compressive now the tensile force the experience of the rod will change to compression the force of compression will be experienced by the rod so in these two cases if a rod experiences pure tensile or compressive forces then the rod is called as a bar now this is called as a bar so what is the definition of a bar a bar is a structural element see what is a structural element a structural element is an individual member by combining such similar members a structure can be constructed and structures are actual engineering artifacts like bridges arches cables and trusses so in order to construct the structures we either need bars or beams or columns so we have understood what is a bar a bar is an individual rod or a member of the structure which is capable or which is currently experiencing only tensile or compressive forces purely tensile and compressive forces in that case the structural member would be called as a bar now let us understand what is a beam 
again the same example is taken okay i don't have to draw anything i have a good figure right here now look at this figure i am calling it as a cantilever now we are coming to beams again you can see that the same rod like structure is taken ek metal ki rod le li apan ne and again this particular figure is showing that this rod is embedded into the ball either ball ke andar isko gaad diya hai but now i am neither pulling nor pushing the rod i am applying a perpendicular load from above like this the load p is being applied now what will be the experience of the rod that you have embedded in the ball will it be experiencing tension will it be experiencing compression or will it be experiencing a bending force like this bending force yes sir now now in this case the rod is going to experience a force as if somebody is trying to bend the rod in the downward direction on the contrary if i apply the force in the upward direction then the rod will experiencing a bending force in the upward direction so it will have a tendency to get bent like this so if the same rod that was earlier in our case when you applied a horizontal force longitudinally then this was a bar now this is the same rod but in this case you are applying a transverse perpendicular force and it is causing a bending and if the rod is experiencing a bending moment or bending in that case you call it as a beam so now let us sum up what we have learned till now what are structures structures are engineering artifacts which are useful for human beings in day to day life they can be bridges arches pathways anyway anything it can be anything structural elements are metallic rods which can be joined together with each other to construct the structures eventually ye dekho aap ek bar is figure ko dekho this is a structure which we call as a truss now as you can see this whole truss is constructed by joining different rods with each other can you see this is the skeleton of a bridge truss or you can say that this is a unfinished bridge now when all the cement and road material all the dammer and all will be put on the road over here and then all the decorations are covering these things you you might not be able to see the different individual components actually connected here you will see a solid completed bridge but the skeleton of the bridge is actually made up of supporting metallic rods like these and these are connected with each other at joints to eventually construct the backbone or the skeleton of the bridge so this is also a structure so you can see that most of the engineering or or rather we should specifically say civil engineering artifacts or structures are basically made of individual rods connected with each other so once they are connected to each other they become a structure this whole thing is a structure but now we are specifically talking about one element taken out of the structure and we are discussing the details of that element so if you take the elements individually out of the structure and then you check whether it is a beam or a bar it will be called as a bar if it experiences only tensile and compressive forces as discussed earlier it will be called as a beam if it experiences a bending force like this either the rod will be bent in the upward direction or the rod will be bent in the downward direction if a bending effect is appearing on the force then the rod itself will be called as a beam and it will not be called as a bar although please remember the element is the same it is not changing see the construction is exactly the same the only thing that you have changed is the direction from which you are applying the force so if a perpendicular force is applied the bar becomes a beam if i take away this perpendicular force and replace it with a horizontal force then the beam becomes a bar this is the essential difference that you have to remember beams show bending stresses bars show tensile or compressive stresses now again beam has been further sub classified into some other types of beams these are all beams now the next thing that we are going to learn is what are the different types of beams that you will be studying in engineering mechanics
when one end of the beam is fixed and the other end is free it is called as cantilever you remember this when both the ends of the beam are supported at two ends and there is a force applied perpendicularly now again as you can see this beam will have a tendency to bend like this so since bending is coming this is again a beam you will call this as a beam see this is a rod but this rod is experiencing bending due to the perpendicular force and hence it will be called as a beam but which beam is this is it a cantilever beam or a simply supported beam this will be called as a simply supported beam if you provide two simple supports at the extreme ends of the beam now as you can see the supports are not necessary that they have to be applied at the ends only you can apply the supports anywhere for example in the next type of beam which we call as the overhanging beam i have put a support here and another support here now as you can see that the beam is overhanging beyond the support on the left side and overhanging beyond the support on the right side also and there are no supports here at the extreme ends if you see a beam like this this will be called as a overhanging beam and you can it's very easy to remember also overhanging beyond the supports then only you will call it as overhanging beam look here there is no overhang here you ignore this small portion you can essentially consider that the support is given here only so there is no overhang here so this is simply supported beam now we come to another type which is called as the fixed beam if this was a cantilever beam cantilever beam is defined as a fixed support given at the left or the right end and one of the ends has to be free then it is a cantilever and if you change the cantilever by fixing both the ends now both the ends are fixed this is also a wall this is also a wall and both the ends of the beam or the bar are embedded inside the wall and then you apply loads in this case the bending will occur something like what i am going to draw right here you might be wondering ki bhai isme kis tarah ki bending hogi in this case the bending will be somewhat like this see look at this particular part and look at this particular part if it was not a fixed beam but a cantilever beam then there is only one wall and the bending occurs like this sorry it's a smooth curve bending occurs like this rather the bending starts from the free end itself like this this is how the bending is going to be in a cantilever beam but in a fixed beam there will be a small portion of the beam which will be parallel to the initial shape before deformation this is how the deformed shape of the fixed beam after applying the loads will look this is the deformed shape of a cantilever a smooth curve this is not a smooth curve there is a parallel part then a dip then the curve climbs up then a parallel part this is the difference between the deformations but anyway you will learn much more about these different types of beams in your strength of material classes and then there is a continuous beam continuous beam is simply defined as a beam which has more than two supports now look at this beam this is a very very long beam and in order to support the entire length of the beam there is one support here one support here 3 4 5 there are five supports given so how do you define a continuous beam a continuous beam can be simply defined as a beam which has more than two supports that's it so that will be called as a continuous beam in other words what the name of the beam is trying to suggest is that the beam is continuing its length of span beyond the mandatory requirement of minimum two supports bhai do support to dene hi padenge na beam ko ek support pe beam bana sakte ho kya no तो झूला बन जाएगा वो दैट इज नॉट अ बीम तो अ मिनिमम ऑफ टू सपोर्ट्स आर नीडेड एंड इफ द बीम इज सो लॉन्ग दैट मोर देन टू सपोर्ट्स आर नीडेड देन यू कॉल इट एज अ कंटिन्यूस बीम दीज आर द बेसिक थिंग्स दैट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर एंड इफ समथिंग रिलेटेड टू दीज थिंग्स इज आस्ड इन योर एग्जामिनेशन 
this sheet containing the notes is already given to you you make very simple figures like this and explain very little in the form of writing i have already told you earlier also that your writing part should be minimum as minimum as possible and your explanation should be supported more with the help of figures simple figures like this that will constitute a good answer and that will fetch you better marks in your exam so we have learned about bars we have learned about beams and now the third type of member that can be used in a structure is called as a column i haven't drawn any figure for column because it's very easy to understand let us see this is a column a bridge is connected with rods and the trusses and the frame structure are all made by connecting them with each other and the structural elements which take the compressive vertical loads are called as columns so what is a column a column will most definitely take a compressive force only a column will most definitely be found in a vertical situation and column is generally used to support the loads acting from above so this is how you can construct a column this is the ground on which the column has been erected now most definitely in a civil engineering application the column will be embedded deep under the ground so that a very good supporting structure is created so this is embedded deep within the ground and then you will see a vertical structure climbing upwards most com commonly it is appearing as pillars in in your buildings etc aapne bade bade hall mein is tarah ke pillars dekhe honge jo vertical aapki jo deewar bhi nahi hai sirf pillar ki tarah khadi hoti hai these are columns so columns are vertical they resist axial compressive loads only so if somebody draws a figure like this this is the ground and somebody says i am pulling it upwards what will you call it bar beam or column somebody can put the microphone if they are you will call it as a bar this is not a column this is just a trick that it was given in the vertical direction now some some of you might immediately give the answer that this is a column because it is vertical so what if it is vertical look at the force which is being applied here the force that is being applied here is that of a tensile nature so there is a tension inside the column and column has to be defined with compressive loads only so this is not a column this is a bar so all those who said that this was a bar your answer is correct now let us move on to what are the different types of structures so we have already discussed that different structures that you can see in day to day life are roof trusses bridge trusses cables arches these are all structures so cables and arches are put under the same category trusses or the star attraction of our lecture today is a different category now we have to understand what is the difference between these and there is another thing called as a frame and eventually there is something called as a machine so what are structures structures are sub classified into trusses so structures can be trusses structures can be cables and arches structures can be frames and structures can be machines and all of these are examples see in each one of them you can see individual members being connected see these are individual rods constituting the cable the arch is shown as a cemented figure but if you take out all the tiling and cement out of this you will once again see the construction of rod like structures like this these are joints
if you take out the cement and all you will see the reinforced material once again or the skeleton of this arch would be found once again in the form of individual rods connected to each other and only above this skeleton is the cement and reinforcement concrete and all embedded to form a final arch structure which is visible with our naked eyes in day to day life so inside the arch also there are individual connecting members now what are trusses cables and arches we have already studied we will not be going into details of how to construct cables and arches because our main focus is on studying the properties and mathematics of trusses and obviously somebody might ask you in the exam what is the difference between a frame and a truss so you should know something about frames also what is a machine you should know see a simple machine is also shown as being constructed with the help of individual rod like elements and connecting pin joints see we will explain all of this in just a few moments okay a truss permits axial forces only so what is a truss a truss is a structure in which individual members will only be experiencing pure axial loads so i apply a load over it okay i apply a load here i apply a load here and i apply a load here and then i am asking each member i am i am taking this one and asking him what are you experiencing so this fellow tells me i am experiencing a pure compressive force i feel like some invisible force is pressing me inwards then i come to this member and i ask him okay tell me what is your experience when i apply one force at this joint one force at this joint and one force at this joint i am asking what is the experience of this horizontal fellow here so this fellow says i am experiencing a tensile kind of force as if something is pulling me apart so i ask him again are you experiencing some sort of bending like this he says no no bending nothing so why is it not experiencing any bending see i have completed a structure and this almost looks like the skeleton of an arch right so if heavy objects are going to be moving over this arch that means vertical loads are going to come over it why is there no bending being experienced by these guys these fellows are not experiencing any bending all of them will tell you they are experiencing either pure compression or tensile forces the reason for this is the joints the speciality is the joint that you have made here look at these joints this joint this joint these joints are called as pin joints now this is very important to understand what is a pin joint look at this i have taken the liberty of getting an example of a pin joint from the internet so that you can understand why bending is not coming pin joint was understood or rather discussed in the previous class also and i drew the pin joint like this i i i drew a small triangle like figure and then i put a dot over here and then i put a member like this and i said that this is a pin joint now this is what a pin joint actually looks like see this is a hollow member this is a solid member and this solid member and the hollow member are connected with the help of a pin this pin is a different entity altogether it can be taken out of this joint and if you take it out of the joint you will see that this is a small cylindrical pin this is the pin if you take this red object out this is what you are going to see so if you connect this first part the second part and the pin what you get is a pin joint like this now do you get the idea of a pin joint this is showing that the pin joint will allow 
the rotation between the two connected elements if you connect element number 1 and element number 2 with the help of a pin joint then pin joint will not restrict the rotation of the elements with respect to each other did you understand this can anybody respond and tell me if this the logic of the pin joint is clear to you or not yes sir clear sir yes sir Yes, sir. Sir, 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 sir. So, if each pin joint in a connected structure is going to allow rotation, that itself logically implies that on the application of external loads on the completed truss will allow all the members to rotate and accommodate the bending stresses with respect to each other. so since rotation is allowed in a truss at the joint the bending effect will not manifest anywhere and all the members inside a truss will only experience either axial tension or axial compression so if i take an individual member out of the truss and ask him what is your experience and if he tells me i am experiencing tension that means this is his experience and if i ask another member i take it out of the truss i need your consent on a few items to continue and he says i am experiencing compression i need your consent on a few items to continue then this is his experience so as you can see pure tension is aligned along the axis of the member pure compression is also aligned along the axis of the member and hence the condition imposed on a truss that it experiences or transmits axial forces only this is the speciality of a truss so if somebody asks you to very very specifically give the differentiating feature of a truss which differentiates it from all the other type of structures cables and arches frames machines how is a truss different from all the other types of structures then you have to give a very simple answer in a truss if you take out any individual member then the individual member would be experiencing pure tension or pure compression in the axial direction only no bending is experienced in a truss this is what is called as a truss so ab ek bar hindi mein main aapko aur isko wapas se repeat karta hu ki agar aap individual members ko pin joints use karke is tarah se connect karke koi structure bana le jisse ki pin joints pe rotation allow hone ke karan aap kisi bhi tarah ki load agar overall truss pe lagate hain तो उसके कारण किसी भी मेंबर पे बेंडिंग नहीं आ पाती क्योंकि सारे के सारे जॉइंट्स जो हैं वो आपस में रोटेट होकर के उस बेंडिंग इफेक्ट को खत्म कर देंगे अब कौन सी फोर्सेस आ पाएंगी अगर बेंडिंग नहीं आ पा रही है तो हर एलिमेंट में या तो प्योर टेंशन या तो प्योर कंप्रेशन ही अपियर हो पाएगा और इस तरह की जो स्ट्रक्चर होती है जिसके मेंबर्स में प्योर टेंशन और कंप्रेशन ही आ पाता है उनको ट्रस्ट कहा जाता है those kind of structures are called as trusses now you can choose to take the definition as i have copied from some book or you can construct your own definition as i have told you in my own words so aap log apni ichcha se jaise bhi isko define karna chahe you can define it but the basic essential element of the definition must be there ki truss kisko kaha jayega a structure in which all elements experience purely compressive or tensile axial forces only and no bending forces appear they are called as trusses so truss hum kisko bol rahe hain is puri cheez ko truss bol rahe hain ya is element ko truss bol rahe hain can anybody put on the microphone and answer me this question what is truss now pure compression or tension wali element ko truss bolte hain या प्योर कंप्रेशन और टेंशन से कंस्टिट्यूट होने वाली मेंबर्स से बने हुए स्ट्रक्चर को ट्रस्ट बोलते हैं स्ट्रक्चर ट्रस्ट बोलते हैं 
स्ट्रक्चर को ट्रस्ट बोलोगे इंडिविजुअल मेंबर इफ अ स्ट्रक्चर इज अ ट्रस्ट दैट मींस ऑल इंडिविजुअल मेंबर्स कैन एक्सपीरियंस ओनली टेंशन और कंप्रेशन फोर्सेस ओनली नो बेंडिंग फोर्सेस विल बी देयर सो कैन आई से that a trust will be essentially constituted of bars and not beams is this true or false yes sir it is true kyunki bar ki jo definition humne pehle padhi thi wo bhi yahi thi ki ek bar ke andar ya to pure tension aa sakti hai ya pure compression aa sakti hai bending nahi aa sakti jaise hi bending aayegi wo beam ban jayega got it so this is a truss from trusses cables and arches we have already discussed there is not much you can read what is given here and then reconstruct whatever is given with the help of simple diagrams and a few sentences you can reconstruct your answer in the examination now let us move on and come to another major thing which is called as a frame frame kisko kehte hain frame dekho now look at this figure let me enlarge this figure see once again one member second member third member fourth member and again can as you can see these are pin joints so they will allow rotation definitely they will allow rotation this is a wall this is a wall all the joints are pin joints but look at the force it is being applied in the downward direction now just apply your mind apply your logic and try to tell me whether any of these elements would accidentally or intentionally experience a bending force isme bending aayegi ki nahi aayegi ye bata do bas kahin par bhi isme 100% bending aayegi ye dekhte hi aapko pata lag jayega yes, aap is tarah ka koi mechanism bana karke idhar se niche se khinchoge you can simply see that this joint is not being allowed to go upwards or downwards because this rod is fixed here with a pin so definitely there will be a bending beyond this point and since the force is being applied on this rod this will be pulled down so there will be bending here also so this structure involves such members which are not containing pure axial loads only some of the members in this structure are experiencing bending forces or bending stresses also and therefore such structures are called as frames did you understand the difference between a frame and a truss so what is the definition of a frame a definition of a frame is simply a structure in which at least one of the members would be experiencing a bending moment or bending stress that is the definition of a frame i have taken down the definition from a book but if you have understood the concept of a frame then you can simply write it in your words in general the elements of a frame would experience bending at least one of them will experience bending if you construct a frame in which none of the elements are experiencing bending and all of them are experiencing pure tension and compression then it becomes a truss okay now let us come to the machine ab aisa kaun sa structure hai jisko hum machine kahenge usko na to truss kahenge na frame kahenge na bridge kahenge na arch kahenge na cable kahenge what is a machine a machine must involve the motion of the links involved in that तो ये देखो मूविंग पार्ट्स होने चाहिए उसके अंदर इसमें कोई भी पार्ट मूव नहीं करेगा पार्ट बेंड हो जाएगा डिफॉर्म हो जाएगा लेकिन पार्ट्स मूव नहीं कर रहे ट्रस में कोई पार्ट मूव नहीं कर रहा है उसके अंदर टेंसाइल और कंप्रेसिव फोर्सेस अपीयर हो रही हैं बट द रूफ ट्रस इन इट इज नॉट मूविंग ये लिंकेजेस ऐसे ही घूम नहीं रही है मूव नहीं कर रही है दे आर नॉट मूविंग देर इज नो मोशन नॉट लेट इज अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज कंस्ट्रक्टेड ओवर हियर लुक हियर there is a pin joint here pin joint here pin joint here this is fixed okay pin joint here pin joint pin joint pin joint and there is a empty slot 
for this pin joint so that this pin itself can move right and left okay there is a pin joint but this is again fixed now just apply your logic and simply think about a scenario where see this also has a hollow empty slot now at this pin i am applying an external push of force m i am pushing this pin so what will happen this is fixed this will make this rod rotate in this direction and hence this joint will be pushed up this will be pushed up there will be rotation of this rod along this direction there will be rotation of this rod along this direction and all these linkages will work together and if there is a dead load of weight w resting on the top platform this weight will be lifted up so essentially ye jo figure banaya gaya hai yahan pe this is the figure of a lifting jack jack suna na apne car ke upar apan screw jack wagera laga ke cars ka puncture sahi karne ke liye uthate na yes sir so this is a very simple mechanism in which a push generated at this linkage will cause this platform to rise up or essentially rising the dead weight resting on the platform in the upward direction to ye machine ho gayi to machine ke liye kya requirement hai machine bhi dekho wahi same rods wahi same pin joints ko lekar ke banayi gayi hai jo ki trusses aur frames ke liye use karte hain but the difference is that the machine will have moving parts or it is designed in such a way this this is a structure which is designed in such a way so as to enable motion and to cause a transformation of some input force into an output force of some other kind to isko machine kehte hain apna theek hai to aap is tarah ke simple examples simple figures ko lekar ke simple definitions banaye aur apne theoretical answers ko prepare kare So you have understood what is a truss, what is a frame, what is a machine. You have understood what are the different constituent elements of a structure. They can be bars, they can be beams, or they can be columns. And now, let us move on further in the lecture and come to different types of support conditions. This is a subsidiary topic, and you can simply. cover the complete topic by looking at this figure only different types of support conditions see pin support i have already discussed what a pin support is and as discussed in our previous numerical which we discussed yesterday a pin support can experience only two types of reactions a horizontal reaction and a vertical reaction ye maine pichli class mein aapko samjhaya tha theek hai fixed support a beam which is embedded inside the wall this will experience a horizontal reaction a vertical reaction as well as a bending moment see in today's discussions we have already covered that a vertical load applied at, at the end will cause the beam to bend like this so if bending is occurring a bending moment will automatically appear as a reaction that is the reason why a fixed beam will give a horizontal reaction a vertical reaction and a bending moment so all these three parts r h r v and m constitute the reaction developed at the fixed support ye sab apne kaam aayegi baad mein to ye aapko as a general knowledge for engineering mechanics you should remember this is a roller support this is also a roller support this is also a roller support तो रोलर सपोर्ट की क्या खासियत होती है इट गिव्स ओनली अ वर्टिकल रिएक्शन इन द डायरेक्शन परपेंडिकुलर टू द रेस्टिंग सरफेस ये रोलर सपोर्ट्स की खासियत है सी दिस इज सिंपली अ बॉल प्लेस्ड बिलो द बीम दिस विल गिव अ परपेंडिकुलर रिएक्शन इसमें हॉरिजॉन्टल रिएक्शन आ ही नहीं सकती क्यों क्योंकि हॉरिजॉन्टल जैसे ही आप बीम को पुल करोगे ये रोलर बोलेगा कि चले जाओ आगे मैं तो रोकता ही नहीं आपको so this roller will never stop horizontal motion so there will be no horizontal reaction this is another way of drawing this same thing 
ये भी रोलर है ये भी रोलर है नाउ इन दिस फिगर रोलर सपोर्ट इज गिवन ऑन एन इंक्लाइंड प्लेन हाउ विल द रिएक्शन बी आप ये मत बोलना कि भाई रोलर का तो हमेशा प्योर वर्टिकल होता है तो इसका भी ऐसे होगा नो रॉन्ग प्योर वर्टिकल टू वॉट प्योरली वर्टिकल टू द ग्राउंड एंड सिंस द ग्राउंड इज इंक्लाइंड हियर सो दिस विल बी द प्योर वर्टिकल रिएक्शन एंड हेंस द रिएक्शन डायरेक्शन फॉर दिस पर्टिकुलर रोलर सपोर्ट इज लाइक दिस वाई नॉट बिकॉज दिस रोलर इज समिंग स्पेशल इट्स बिकॉज द रोलर इज रेस्टिंग ऑन एन इंक्लाइंड प्लेन दैट इज वाई द रिएक्शन इज inclined here otherwise a roller support will give pure vertical reaction only pin joint in general will generate horizontal and vertical both reactions a fixed support will generate horizontal reaction vertical reaction and a bending moment so this is something that you have to remember so this diagram is important you have to revise it support conditions okay now let us move ahead types of loading we will discuss that and these types of loadings will be generally taught to you in detail in strength of material so i am skipping this complete part types of loading you can read it from the little material that i have already pasted from some other books and in strength of material you will be actually solving numericals related to these types of loadings so i am skipping this because you will be anyway studying it in your other subject this semester only now a very important discussion on classification of trusses now this formula has to be remembered by you a truss but you have to remember what a truss is let me construct a figure for you and ask you whether this is a truss or not okay i create a pin joint here this is the ground i take a metallic member another pin joint i take another metallic member another pin joint and a third metallic member so i have constructed a structure which is triangular in shape and there are three members member number 1 member number 2 member number 3 how many joints are there joint number 1 joint number 2 and joint number 3 so there are three members and three joints and at this end i put a roller support now my question is is this a truss or not give me your answer is this a truss or not anybody no sir why is it not a truss Sir, because in the roller support, uh, it will not support uh, horizontal. This is fixed. This is fixed, and if I apply a load at any joint, what will happen? All the joints will rotate and accommodate themselves for rotation, and only pure tensile and compressive loads will be experienced. This one will experience tensile force. this one will experience tensile sorry one and two will experience compressive force and three will experience tensile force so this is a truss the correct answer is that it is a truss now further what we have to learn is whether it is an efficient or perfect truss or it is an imperfect truss now in order to make this classification you have to make use of this equation m is the number of members j is the number of joints now please make a calculation for this figure and tell me if this equation is satisfied or not what is the value of m for this figure 3 3 m is 3 what is the value of j for this figure 3 3 again 3 apply this equation 
थ्री इक्वल टू टू इंटू थ्री माइनस थ्री इज इट गेटिंग सैटिस्फाइड और नॉट सो दैट मीन दिस इज अ परफेक्ट ट्रस्ट नाउ वॉट इज द फिजिकल सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ अ परफेक्ट ट्रस्ट यू विल से कि भाई आप आपने तो हमें एक इक्वेशन दे दी और बस इक्वेशन को देख करके हम एम निकाल ले जे निकाल ले इसमें पुट कर ले और उसके बाद आप बोल दो कि बस ये परफेक्ट है या फिर इम्परफेक्ट है चलो वी विल कम टू द बेसिक अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ परफेक्ट और इम्परफेक्ट प्रोसेस बट लेट मी गिव यू अनदर एग्जाम्पल आई एम मेकिंग अ ट्रस्ट ओके pin joint but fixed to the ground pin joint but on rollers generally trusses ka ek support hamesha roller hi hota hai aur ek support hamesha pin fixed hota hai okay tell me whether this is a perfect truss or imperfect truss perfect truss jo hai wo is equation ko exactly satisfy karega aur agar isme kahin pe bhi inequality aa gayi तब ये इम्परफेक्ट ट्रस्ट हो जाएगा नाउ जस्ट टेल मी बाय यूजिंग दिस इक्वेशन दिस ट्रस्ट इम्परफेक्ट हो गया नंबर ऑफ मेंबर्स कितने हैं फोर नंबर ऑफ जॉइंट्स कितने हैं फोर फोर अप्लाई दिस इक्वेशन फोर इज नॉट इक्वल टू एट माइनस थ्री तो दिस इज इम्परफेक्ट ट्रस्ट ठीक है अच्छा अब इम्परफेक्ट की एक्चुअल एप्लीकेशन देखते हैं अपन कि भाई इम्परफेक्ट क्यों कह रहे हो इसको सिर्फ एक इक्वेशन को सेटिस्फाई नहीं कर रहा तो इसका मतलब ये हो गया कि इम्परफेक्ट है अच्छा खासा तो ट्रस्ट दिख रहा है चार मेंबर है चार जॉइंट है रोलर सपोर्ट है अच्छे सपोर्ट है भाई वाई वाई आर यू कॉलिंग इट एज इम्परफेक्ट नाउ जस्ट अप्लाई योर ब्रेन वंस अगेन एंड इमेजिन वॉट विल हैपन इफ आई अप्लाई लोड हेयर क्या होगा इसका क्या ये अपना शेप रिटेन कर पाएगा ये ऐसे हो जाएगा कैन यू इमेजिन दिस इफ आई अप्लाई अ वर्टिकल लोड ऑन दिस द ट्रस्ट विल गेट डिफॉर्म्ड एंड बिकम समथिंग लाइक दिस इस तरह से बिगड़ जाएगा इसका शेप कैन यू इमेजिन इट नो सर अब इससे पिछले वाले ट्रस्ट को देखो ट्राइंगुलर शेप और अब की बार मैं आपको ये सिर्फ वर्टिकल लोड नहीं लगा रहा हूं आई एम अप्लाइंग एन एंगुलर लोड हियर एट दिस जॉइंट आप सोच के बताओ क्या इस ट्राइंगुलर शेप में कोई डिफॉर्मेशन आएगा क्या क्या इस ट्राइंगुलर शेप को बिगाड़ सकते हो This triangular shape will never get distorted. You will obviously experience some tension and compression in the rod, but the triangular shape of the truss will never get distorted. However, a rectangular shape can get distorted like this. Can get distorted like this. समझ रहे हो? इधर मैं चार पिन लगा दूँ. पिन जॉइंट्स लगा दूं और बोलूं कि लो भाई इस पे ऐसी एक फोर्स लगा रहा हूं क्या ये रेक्टेंगुलर शेप मेंटेन हो पाएगा नहीं हो पाएगा ये बिगड़ जाएगा ऐसे बिगड़ जाएगा ये एक मशीन या मैकेनिज्म बन जाएगा ये सो दिस इज द लॉजिक बिहाइंड दिस इक्वेशन इफ एनी ट्रस सेटिस्फाइज दिस इक्वेशन देन यू कैन 100% गिव अ गारंटी दैट ऑन एप्लीकेशन ऑफ एनी काइंड ऑफ फोर्स ऑन द ट्रस the shape of the truss will be maintained however if this equation is not getting satisfied then the shape of the truss will not be maintained on applying external loads so this is how you classify the truss as a perfect truss or imperfect truss ab imperfect truss ko fir further do cheezon mein classify kiya jata hai you can classify it as a deficient truss or a redundant truss Now, what is a deficient truss and redundant truss? 
इसकी डेफिनेशन के लिए आपको सिर्फ ये देखना है अ डेफिशियंट ट्रस्ट इज द वन इन विच दिस इक्वेशन इज सेटिस्फाइड बाय एन इन इक्वेलिटी लाइक दिस एंड रिडेंडेंट ट्रस्ट इज सेटिस्फाइड बाय एन इन इक्वेलिटी इन द ऑपोजिट डायरेक्शन ठीक है इसका इसका एग्जांपल लेते हैं अपन लुक एट दिस ट्रस्ट एंड टेल मी वेदर दिस इज डेफिशियंट और परफेक्ट these are the joints the members are already numbered for you just apply the equation and tell me whether it is a perfect or imperfect truss imperfect this is imperfect because this equation is getting violated ab ye batao imperfect hone ke sath sath ye deficient hai ya redundant hai deficient इट इज अ डेफिशियंट ट्रस्ट ठीक है अगर मैं इसके ऊपर एक मेंबर और ऐड कर दू ये वाला अब बताओ ये परफेक्ट है इम्परफेक्ट है डेफिशियंट है रिटेंडेंट है क्या आई हैव एडेड वन मोर मेंबर लाइक दिस परफेक्ट नाउ इट बिकम द परफेक्ट ट्रस्ट परफेक्ट ट्रस्ट है क्या ये It is a perfect trust. Our equation balance will be. And if I add another element like this, now what? Redundant trust. Now this becomes a redundant trust. So ये हो गया आपकी classification of trusts on the basis of this equation. So ये आपसे two mark के question में इस तरह का कोई भी trust बना करके पूछा जा सकता है कि भाई आपकी trust जो है determinant क्या कहते हैं उस एफिशिएंट या परफेक्ट ट्रस्ट है इम्परफेक्ट है डेफिशिएंट है रिडेंडेंट है क्या है ठीक है दिस कैन बी आस्ड ऑफ यू अब इस वाले लेक्चर में अपना एक छोटा सा टॉपिक आज रह जाता है डिटर्मिनेसी ऑफ ट्रस्ट ये अपन नेक्स्ट क्लास में कवर कर लेंगे और बेसिक एजम्शन ऑफ ट्रस्ट एनालिस करेंगे एंड देन वी विल मूव ऑन टू द न्यूमेरिकल ऑफ ट्रस्ट एनालिस ठीक है बट प्लीज डोंट लीव नाउ एक बार मेरे को अटेंडेंस कलेक्ट करने दो ऑल ऑफ यू प्लीज स्टे इन दिस क्लास ओनली वेन आई टेल यू ओनली देन गो आउट मेंबर्स 46, 46 स्टूडेंट्स आर प्रेजेंट एंड दीज आर टू ओके Okay now you can quit i have collected your attendance have a good day thank you sir okay